So we seem to be living in this golden era of large language models. Of course, OpenAI have led the way with GPT 3.5 and then GPT 4. However, it's not the only uh, company making large language models. Of course, we've had the recent offerings from Google with Gemini, Gemini Pro, Gemini Ultra, and so on. Uh, I've done a video recently about Mistral. And now uh, Anthropic have released their latest version of their Claude uh, large language model. This is Claude 3. It comes in three different sizes. If you want to get access to the biggest one, you need to pay the Pro subscription, which I've done. And so I'm going to take it for a test spin, as I've done in many other videos, to see how it compares. So if you want to find out more, please... Let me explain. Okay, so here we are inside of Claude 3. Now notice here you can pick different uh, LLMs here. Opus is the one you get if you, if you subscribe to the Pro model, which I've done. This is the one you get for free, but when I tried it, it was overloaded. So back to how it was in the days of chat GPT, remember 3.5, you, you couldn't get access to it. So I couldn't, that's so why I went for the pro one. And here are the previous models as well. And what we could do, as we normally do, is we're gonna ask it some quick questions and see how well it does. This first question is about a basketball tournament. I give it some information and I'm gonna ask it who, which team won the overall basket uh, tournament. And it says, so it's going through it here. And uh, so Tiger's got six points. The running Cardinals got three points. The Hoopkins got zero points. Therefore, the Tigers won the tournament with a total of six. That is correct. That is the correct answer. So, so far, that's good. Just to say that uh, other LLMs like ChatGPT and uh, Mistral get all these right as well. So we're really seeing how well they compare to the others. If it takes three hours for three towels to dry, how long does it take for nine towels to dry? And so it's saying, let's have a look at it. Three towels. So therefore, drying time for nine towels is nine hours. Ah! Uh, that is not right at all. Now, what's interesting about that is if you take this, it takes three hours for three towels to dry in the sun. How long does it take now? nine towels to dry? I wonder if that gives us a different answer. Okay, that's interesting. So here it's saying that it's uh, one hour times nine is nine hours. But therefore it says... Therefore, it will take three hours for nine towels to dry in the sun. So it takes three hours for three towels to dry under the same condition. So it's having a better a better stab at it there. So let's move on. Let's ask it a question about there's some objects on a shelf. What color is the bowl? The answer we're expecting is ocean blue. According to the description the, on the shelf, ocean blue is the color. That is correct. Now, here's one of my favorite questions. We ask it about some movies and we've had different answers from different LMs. In one says there's not really a right or a wrong answer. Which of these movies is most similar to Star Wars uh, Episode 4, A New Hope? And in there we've got The Princess Bride, Father of the Bride, Plane, Trains and Automobiles. And it says The Matrix, which is the answer you'd expect. Some of them did say that a better answer was The Princess Bride because it was about a heroic journey uh, to save somebody, which is similar. Okay, no wrong answer there. I think that's absolutely fine. Uh, that is the answer I would expect. Now on to a sports question. This is about soccer or football as we call it over here. No, the sentence is not plausible in football. Oh, soccer even knows to translate. Therefore, uh, the offside rule applies only to people that are in the on the field. So that is correct. So, so far, all good. Now that's looking at logic and a bit of things like that. Now, how is it good at doing some corrections? So I've got a statement here. That, uh, that I've written and it's in English, but it's got lots of mistakes. For example, South Africa there's got two A's at the end of it. The river does span, that's a, a failure there. Kilometers with a C rather than a K and so on. Let's see if it's able to correct that. So let's have a quick look. Africa looks right within the river spans, that's correct. Oh, we're telling me the corrections it's made. Oh, that's very helpful of it. Uh, Africa with two A's, yes, does span. Spans kilometers with a K. South Africans is South Africa. Nambia with a, the is and the are outdoor, correct to outdoor. Yes, that is actually what I would like. And that's actually good. And I like the way it's given me the uh, corrections there as well. So top marks there. Okay, let's move on to a bit of programming. I'm asking to write me a Python script. This is something I've made up. Uh, it's not a standard algorithm. So let's see what it does. Enter your name. Uh, it does one digest, does the other digest, and then let's see, look here, does it use lowercase? That's one of the things. So it's 
if A is in lower. Yes, so that's a perfect answer. That is a perfect answer there from Claude and even gives us an explanation afterwards. That's great. Now the next question is to see if you can write some C code that can parse and evaluate a mathematical expression like this. Uh, the other LLMs give the answer by using the shunting yard algorithm. And I've got some uh, videos here about the shunting yard algorithm. Let's see what Claude says to us. Stack based approach, that's correct. Yep, seems to be developing a shunting yard algorithm here just from reading the code. Well, let's go ahead and try that. Let's go ahead and try it uh, and see what happens. Let's go ahead and try and compile it. It compiles. Let's run it. Uh, one plus two times three is three. No, <laughs> no, it's not. Okay, let's try it again. One plus one. No. Okay, maybe it's wanting some spaces. One plus one, no. Okay, so uh, the code it created didn't actually work. That's a shame. So obviously we might be able to go back into, um, into Claude and say, it doesn't work. Can you fix this please? But first time round here, it doesn't work. Okay, let's try it with another programming question. This time I'm trying to find a bug. There is an overflow bug in this code. I've asked all these questions of the other LLMs, Mistral and uh, ChatGPT. So let's see what it says. It's talking about the integers, long, long. Let's see the code it produces. This is the important thing. Sum, sum, long, long, num, one. Okay, and what's it doing? It's casting the first one to num, one to start with. Yep, that will fix the problem. That will uh, do it. Uh, and it's also using a double there, so it's split out the line there. Okay, so it's fixed that one. I think that can uh, that's good. Now, another problem is that I've got for a bug hunting here is I've got a CRC32 bit of code. I've added in this extra line here, i is equal to i plus one. You don't need that. Let's see if it's able to fix that for us. Okay, so it did say at the very beginning here, the issue of the code is that the loop variable i is being incremented twice. That's correct. Okay, and I'm going to assume if it knew that, that uh, it was able to, there you go, remove its bracket, look, remove the extra increment of i, and then it's put that in, in comments there. So I'm not going to compile that. I'm just going to assume that since it said it knew what it was doing, oh, it even ran it. Look at that. That is correct. That is the, actually the correct answer if you run that. Okay, that's good. Okay, let's see what other programming language it knows. Write code in Lua to find the first 100 prime numbers. Let's see if it can understand that. Okay, that code looks reasonable. Let's try and run it. Yep, that looks good. That's the first 100 primes. That's a good job. Okay, so there we have it. A strong performance there from Claude 3. It only seemed to falter on that one question about the mathematical expression, writing the C code in the shunting yard algorithm. Maybe if I'd given it a different prompt, maybe if I'd given it some clues about to use the shunting yard algorithm or something like that. Maybe if I'd asked it to have a second go, it might have done better. But overall, I think a strong performance. Now, of course, it really does now come down to who do you want to give your money to? You, There are some free versions. There are ones you can run on your own PC. And I cover all of that here on this channel. There are, of course, Bing, Google, uh, you've got Mistral, you've got Anthropic. There are just so many different ones to choose from. Some of them are free, some of you pay for. Where are you going to put your money? That really is the question. Of course, a lot of heart and minds, a lot of people are loyal to OpenAI just because of that trailblazing. In my next video, I'm going to look at which is the cheapest one to use if you're using the API access. So you've got a program, a Python script, a C program, whatever, and you want to do something interacting with the LLM, looking at the pricings, which one is the best. If you're interested in that, do stick around. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of these kind of videos, then hey, stick around and subscribe to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.